our natural and historic assets, employment and agriculture and infrastructure, while recognising that we have climate emergency and do all, all we can to protect and improve the environment and to consider alternative modes of transport. These proposals are based upon evidence about the economic, social and environmental needs of this borough. I believe that this is a balanced strategy which is economically focused to drive growth and jobs and in addition to meet the housing need. So within our plans we have identified the employment and agriculture land we believe to be required. Mr Mayor, the Issues and Options document for public consultation presents choice and demonstrates that we have put forward all reasonable options with the least impact to the Greenbelt. It proposes key regeneration of large parts of the eastern side of Wirral, particularly in Birkenhead and Wallasey. And this will play a crucial role in helping deliver the housing and employment need needed into the future. If councils agree on going out to consultation to seek the public views, it is planned that this will commence on the 27th of January for eight weeks. The public should be kept, sorry, the public should be keen in influencing the proposals for land use over the coming 15 years. It is intended that there will be a website for the consultation and paper copies available. There will be drop-in events across all the constituencies within the borough as well as focus groups for those within our community who may find it a little harder to reach. Members, tonight is our opportunity to vote to go out to the general public to get their views. We need to hear how they think the council should meet the development and employment requirements of the borough before submitting the details to the Secretary of State. I am nearly finished. We need to hear any evidence that they might have to demonstrate that there are special circumstances that could reduce our housing numbers. It is important that everybody, everyone knows these options are not set in stone and no final decision has been made on the draft local plan. This is why it is crucial that the public and all stakeholders in Wirral are given the chance to look at these proposals and tell us what they think, because their views will play an important part in shaping the final document to which we submit. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Take out 2B. Okay, thank you, Councillor Leach. I have used a little bit of discretion here to give Councillor Leach a chance to finish that.
because we all have concerns when we read the documentation, looking at descriptions of lower performing parcels of Greenbelt, or weakly performing parcels of Greenbelt. So I'm grateful that we now have the documentation studying each of those sites, that many sites that were under challenge previously, certainly golf course, places like that have been removed. But of course, those need a basis that can go to the public inquiry at the end, and good evidence on our part as to what the council's thinking about and why. In the documentation, especially Appendix 4.7, that's spelt out. And we talk about getting further consideration uh, when an area is proposed by a developer or landowner. So all that evidence we have amassed will need eventually to go to inquiry. You remember last year, Mr Mayor, I wrote about agriculture and council kindly passed a resolution about agriculture. I circulated to members last week a copy of an article from Farmers Weekly. So I'm grateful that the agricultural study that we asked for has been done. And there's a wealth of information in there that should help us and the agriculture industry in rural, no matter how few or many employed by it, help preserve our countryside and help cope with climate change. The document also, in great detail in the appendix is 402, talks about sites we haven't looked at before, not in detail. Sites at Dock Road South, sites around Hine Street, now the subject of suggestion of greater intensity. So if members can pair tables 401 and 402, we can see the intensity under discussion. It is important that as we increase density or discuss it, we consult and get it right. The whole purpose of this amendment tonight is to stress that we are going out to consultation, we need to get it right in the interests of future generations. And as I started the quote from Charles the Button, he said at the end, it is true that this undulating landscape has little of magnificence or grandeur, but in quiet English serenity and smiling pastoral, it stands unrivaled. Mr Mayor, I commend this suggestion of amendment to Council. Thank you, Okay, we're now going to have a debate on the amendment only. No, sorry. It's been accepted, so it's been accepted by okay, we don't need to do that then. Okay, um, so we don't need anyone to speak on it. That's accepted by everyone yeah. um, so we have it. Go back. Okay, go back to the debate then on the um, original motion. Right. As, as amended. Sorry, as amended. Right. Do I have some speakers on that? Um, we we'll just take some names first. Um, just take down two quick. Just take the just no remain standing just so that we Sorry. <laughs>
So all councillors who are involving themselves, I'm sure, with the proposed consultation, especially those representing the east and the outlying areas, should bear in mind the effect we require to provide affordable housing and also provide, provide these areas with sustainable investments and ensure developers are encouraged to build and invest in these areas, not leaving these areas behind in the plans for the future. And I know you touched on that in your speech, Anita. Um, housing pressures, as we're aware, in the UK have many negative effects with regards to congestion and traffic jams. Pressures on local services such as schools and doctors and the population is projected to reach 73 million in 2035. The pressure to provide homes has increased and will continue to do so. So I'm just skirting around the full problems that can be created by the decisions we're going to make this year on the areas we're going to decide and we will release for new building and development. And I hope this consultation will reach out and meet the demands required for the much needed increasing in housing, whilst at the same time taking into account our residents' concerns and wishes to be sympathetic to all aspects of the effect of the new building plan which could create. We should have at this point to have an open mind, but listen to what this consultation and its content will inform and the information it will provide as well as councillors. And I hope all councillors will at the end make a balanced and more educated decision on the allocation of sites to new homes, whilst at the same time appeasing all our constituents in, protect, in protecting the world for our future next generations to come. Let us not forget the decisions we take today will have a sustained effect for when we won't be here any longer, but for the future generation. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Andrew. Um, right, uh, Councillor Pat Cleary. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Mayor. Um, first of all, I thank all the officers uh, who worked so hard to prepare all this documentation. I know how hard they have worked, and, and our thanks is due to them. Uh, I just want to start by expressing some of the unease about the overall government imposed target of 12,000 homes over the next uh, 15 years or so. Uh, Mr. Mayor, if people in Wirral find property expensive and unaffordable, I think that has less to do with the number of new homes we are building and far more to do with a decade of near zero interest rates and money printing, which has really enabled the cash rich to buy off property at the expense of the cash. And that, Mr. Mayor, is why home ownership in this country is now at a 30 year low. So while the Council must respect the legal advice it receives, there is, I believe, scope to also include and also um, include a locally, a locally prepared evidence based proposals for a lower housing charge. And I hope that officers will consider that going forward. Uh, I've had a look at the document, particularly at the, at, the, at the information on empty properties. And I would kind of raise the issue, if there is a housing shortage in Wirral, then why is the number of empty properties actually higher today than it was back in 2014? Now, I uphold the work of the empty properties team. I liaise with them regularly on issues in my ward, and they do a great job. But if we're going to meet the targets we've set out around empty properties in this document, then I think we're going to have to up our game significantly and really start to look more intensively at compulsory purchase. Uh, in my own board, compulsory purchase has played a very positive role. We've seen regeneration and new retail along Oxton Road. We've seen the replacement of the derelict shops by Berkeley Library with new green space. But nearby as well, we've also seen the Victoria Lodge Hotel, which has had derelict for over a decade and really blighted the local community. And the development developer there doesn't bring forward any regeneration plans, doesn't submit a planning application, shows absolute disdain for the local community. But we need to stand up to that kind of land banking and address it. Um, given the housing target we face, we obviously have a lot of 
this council support to the streetcar option, it's really negligent, I think, that we have not supported that option and not come forward with something better if we think that's not good enough.
and uh, all those increased number of residents need to have green space to be um, relaxing in as well. So whatever we need to do, we need to keep that special character of Wirral and not quite as poetic as the uh, quote that Phil had. But we're limited on three sides by water. It's a different place, Wirral. Having grown up in the middle of the country, Wirral is special and different. I welcome the consultation. I urge all concerned Wirral residents to take part, have their say. Thank you, Mr Mayor.
understand that in terms of how the new communities will look in, ter in, in terms of where is the space for kids to play, where is the space uh, for those communities to breathe. So it's all very well talking about Brownfield Fest, but that can very often uh, lead to, uh, to the loss of amenity on the uh, eastern world. And if I may, Mr Mayor, one final point. Um, I just wanted to uh, raise which one I consider to, to be mentioned in the, in the global. Is that part of the consultation also includes our policies on HMOs. Uh, it's been a long time in, in the making, it was kicked off by uh, Councillor George Davis as the then cabinet member with uh, Ian Lewis and, uh, and myself meeting. Uh, uh, came out of our concern at uh, things that were coming to planning committee. Fortunately, it was picked up by the new cabinet member, Stuart. And again, we were able to work together to get all party agreements on what that policy should look like. And I hope, you know, as this goes on, this is one of the most important things this council is going to do, certainly this year, but possibly for the next 15 years. And I hope that we can approach it yeah, in a manner uh, that says collegiate in the way that we approach the HMOs, and uh, also in a manner that creates the sort of communities that members from different parts of the chamber have said that they wish to see. Thank you, and for that. Yeah, thank you. I'd just like to put on record my thanks as well to Anita for all the hard work that she's done with this and all the opportunities you've actually worked tirelessly, tirelessly since Anita picked it up. Um, for me, the local plan is a once in a lifetime opportunity for us as a council. It's not just about bricks and mortar, this is about building up communities from the grassroots. This is our vision for the borough. So we have got a housing crisis, we've got a health inequalities crisis which we need to address. We've also got an economic crisis with lots of parts, lots of areas of the borough really uh, suffering very, very high levels of deprivation. Um, I think this is our chance to address this uh, and I'm really happy that we have now got this opportunity that Anise has presented to us. Yes, a lot of this will be um, addressed by traditional regeneration and I'm so happy that we have the investment coming in. Thanks for that to your part in that. But what I think we really need to do is embed our community wealth building strategy alongside our traditional regeneration to ensure that we keep wealth within our communities and that it doesn't leak outside. We need to keep wealth in our community and build upon that. Um, where, where possible, we can work, hope to work with developers so they can look at their procurement practices and their hiring practices so we can look to work with them to hire local, <coughs> buy local. Again, it's all about keeping wealth within the borough and building it from the grass roots up. Um, I'm really pleased to see the local plan here. I've had an assurance from Council Leach that we will be working together to implement our community wealth building and embed that within the local plan. And I've got high hopes for this, so I'm, I'm very supportive. Thank you, Council. Um, Councillor Michael uh, Collins. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, <clears throat> in May 2019, I was elected as Lord Councillor for Pansley. And one of the consequences of that election was that Labour were no longer able to take decisions without support of parties. We were able to remove the stranglehold of Labour and Wirral. Wirral uh, Labour has no option now but to listen to all the parties and somebody which must feel very open to them. Mr Mayor, it's time to stop making decisions, which is great to see, behind closed doors, which is about what happened last year when the Green Belt was discussed. And a number of options, Pen B and other areas, were put on the table. Yeah. The Green Belt is to stop the sprawl of large built-up areas, to prevent neighbouring towns merging into one another, to safeguard the countryside from encroachment, to preserve the character of historic towns and to assist with the urban development. Mr. Mayor, we need a plan, a plan which the Council has failed to deliver for over 14 years. And I agree that the preferred option is the best and ensures the green belt is preserved. I strongly believe there is no need to build on green belt. <coughs> and having been advised that the decision tonight is to allow the plan to go out for consultation. I believe that we should indeed allow the residents of Wirral an opportunity to participate in the decision-making process. Wirral residents 
now have the chance to have a say about council policy that will affect their lives where they live, work and relax. <coughs> Mr Mayor, I have consistently said I do not agree with building on our precious green belt, especially as there is sufficient brown belt land or brownfield land to more than meet the requirements of the local plan. Mr Mayor, at this present time, my opinion is I will not support building on the green belt. Thank you.
My final point, two people, two people in my mind, deserve the credit for getting this council to where it is today, through their sheer force of personality. One of which, you won't be surprised to hear, is my, my best friend, Councillor Chris Blakely, who did so much to oppose Labour's support for building on the Green Belt in Silver Massey. And his contribution will never be forgotten by the people in Silver Massey. I'll make sure of that. And the second person we need to thank is Phil Simpson, who is yeah. unusually quiet for a <laughs> Mr. Mayor, I'm reiterating the points of Councillor Collins as a Conservative councillor in Wallasey. I want to support building on this borough's green belt.